one of the most slept on midfielders. One of the most slept on midfielders in Premier League. I agree. Uh, in the modern Premier League. Now we're so, getting into even more fun stuff because this is where we're kind of, kind of in a, it's kind of a team game, this one, because we've got four and we normally do like a six aside of the week. But because this is such a big topic, um, Anthony, Sean and Zim, we're going to split off into two for this, uh, for this part of the podcast as well, because this is a topic that we've been talking about since like December, January. Um, and it's something that we've wanted to do for quite a while. And it's something that we're going to have to do in a couple of episodes. But to start us off, we're going to discuss, just discuss our personal six sides between two of us. Um, so I'd say Anthony and Zim, you can go on one team and me and Sean will go on another team for mm-hmm. the streets will never forget. So these are people from different areas of the Premier League era where we're kind of thinking, you know what? That guy had a really good season that one time or he had a piece of skill that no one else could do at the time. And I'm just there kind of thinking there's so many people to go from. There's so many mm. different thought processes and it's across different eras as well. So, uh, Anthony, I'm not going to ask you for your age, but I just wanted to know, with your kind of era grow, uh, growing up, what was your kind of favourite, like, streets will never forget type of player? Because for me, my first kind of one was like Lauren Robert from Newcastle. And I thought he was a, an outstanding left-footed uh, winger for Newcastle. And they were in the Champions League and UEFA Cup at that point. So they were really... Mm. I just wanted to kind of know from just yourself, Anthony, who's the kind of first one that springs to mind for you? So in terms of like a flair player, like maybe yeah. didn't last that long in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say someone like, I'm 30, by the way. So um, I'd say someone like JJ Okocha. Brilliant. Because he was at Bolton, but he had this flair about him, which no other player in the player in the Premier League had at that time. Like, like a really fresh African player who played with flair, like showed his character as well, which I think the Premier League is all about. It's about showing character showing personality on the pitch, having flair and skill. And DJ Okocha was right up there with the best for me. Mm. But I know he didn't have a long career in the Premier League and he was at Bolton, but just some of the touches, some of the skills. And I think it brought on the European players as well because they saw that in the Premier League. They were playing with Okocha and they could see like how he brought his personality onto the pitch. And I think that's something that shouldn't be sniffed at. So yeah, DJ Okocha for me was right up there. Rainbow flicking over Arsenal defenders, you know, <laughs> yeah. classic, timeless. Yeah. You just see that on the Premier League years all the time, just like Okocha and Yorkaev under Sam Allardyce with Kier at the back. Brilliant. That was some team, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. it's crazy how they were doing. Big so Sam. Well. Big Sam at his peak right there as well, which is great. Um, so I'll, I'll let you take him for your team as well. So he can be like a captain or something like that, because he's someone that had to stand out in that way as well. Uh, Sean, I'll give you the honour of, of starting off for us as well. So who, yeah. if you... If you had to pick one person who springs to your mind, who would it be and why? Do you know what? He's very hated. Many red cards, but many goals at the same time. Alan Smith. Leeds what? United, Alan no, Smith. Nah, you're joking. You're joking. You're joking. You're not picking I... Alan Smith. You're, you're picking Alan Smith Dude. as three Man United fans. You're literally doing that, I swear. Alan Smith. Alan Smith special. from Leeds and Man United. This is crazy. Yeah. I, need, I need to hear no. this. I need to hear this. so left field. <laughs> not Man United one, because Man United, I don't know what happened to him. But Leeds United... <laughs> Alan Smith, he was, for a neutral, he was a cold baller. He was cold. Mm. He had goals. He was the, um, a bong Lahore of that time. Just many, <laughs> many goals. Many, Alan many Smith goals. Alan Smith was the bong Lahore of that time. <laughs> you need to he keep talking many- to him. I need to, I need, I'll back you for this because you're on my team uh, today, but I need to hear this. I need to hear this. No, he, you guys don't remember that time when he was just scoring for fun. He used to get red cards all the time as well. I remember that all the time. Mm. Just used to, Is that uh, a good uh, thing? <laughs> I mean, it, it, the streets will never forget. You never forget. You never forget. <laughs> That's short logic. <laughs> you never forget the red cards. Every yeah. single time I remember seeing him, he was either scoring or getting a red card. That's all I remember from his career. And that Leeds team as well. And that but... blonde, that ice blonde hair. I remember him very well. <laughs> that Leeds team of like Mark Viduka, Harry Kuehl, uh, Stephen yeah. Carr at the back of as well. To pick. <laughs> get into the... no. I love it. Get no, into he the had UEFA character. Cup. Was it the Champions League character. semi-final as well they got to as well with Alan Smith up front? It was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Semi-final, I knew a lot of not saying to him. Just now, no, he was a baller. He was a baller. It was like the last person I expected from your mouth to come out. I swear, <laughs> that was literally why. <laughs> if you know Sean, sure, that's definitely the first person I'd expect. <laughs> you have to go for the untraditionals, man. You have to that's go for it. the untraditionals. Not, not because he said Alan Smith before, but because of Sean logic. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I fully expect that. He scored. Definitely. No, he was doing, he's doing bits. 
Nah, it's, good to, it's good to see him. And the fact that he recovered from like a, a double leg break as well yeah. when he was at Man United and he came back and scored on his first start back against Roma in that 7-1 victory. I will never forget that because that celebration just running off and scoring. Mm. Like, he, he, was, he, was, he was a cult hero at that time just by coming back from that injury. Um, doing really well for Man United in that end of the season when we end up winning the league back again. So, yeah, Alan Smith will have him in there as well. Go on, go on Zim, this, like is, this is your choice. You've had, you've had a bit of a wait just like me to choose. You've yeah. got Poch, so you've got probably one of the best ones possible. So I'd like to see who you've got to add to JJ Ocha in your team. Um, yeah, so th- I guess definitely, obviously, I l- love a Ocha. That's my guy, especially as a, someone of Nigerian origin, you know, got us through the 94 Olympics, like just all round quality guy, went to Bolton from, from, from PSG. You know, mm. like he didn't have to, but like just shone. And that was in a time where it was before stats, you know, it was it was yeah. more about like personality and mm. je ne sais quoi, you know, uh, for lack of a better term. So he wanted, he wanted that Lancashire hot pot, that's what he wanted. That's the real <laughs> of he course, <laughs> of course. He needed he needed yeah. that Lancashire cuisine, that's literally why he went. Yeah, Crazy. he he heard it was similar to a goosey soup in Nigeria, so he thought, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's just have that. But um, so that was in that era. I'm going to use an example of someone a bit later on. Um, and he just did not mix for fun. You know, he just sat defenders on their asses, on their bums, like, you know, for every day, pretty much. Um, and it is a flair player, Adele Tarat. It had, to, it, it had to be the way you're describing him. It's like you're just building him up to, for like a WWE walkout. <laughs> you're talking about him, but... Elbow it, drop. <laughs> there's that clip that you see all the time of him scoring against Arsenal when it was in his first season of the uh, full QPR Premier League as well and that was fantastic as well when also he, like, guys can we talk stop talking about people with memories against Arsenal <laughs> <laughs> you just mentioned Alice Smith and Man United and you started the podcast but no Arsenal is what we, we love we love it in terms of like there'll be a couple of Arsenal players that I've got to mind as well so hopefully they'll yeah. make our team Yeah. but uh, J, uh, JJ Koch and Adel Tarat Let's let's have a little debate. Who would you rather have on your team? Out of those two, out of those two, who are you going for? Because I'm, slide- I'm I was going to say slightly of what for he's me, done in the sure. game, but Tarat was just the uh, he was just like playing like he wouldn't be in the cages, like he wouldn't yeah. be growing up as well. He's someone that you could see enjoying in the championship the year before, especially under Neil Warnock uh, before coming into the Premier League as well. Yeah. Um, are you still it's playing now? Isn't question. It? He played, yeah, yeah, he played Benfica. for Benfica and they yeah. just qualified yesterday as well, which is great. But in yeah. the Premier League, it was a breath of fresh air because we don't see many of those players come onto the scene where they're just there given a free role to play. Because as we've spoken about previously as well, I think Anthony will agree, a lot of number 10s nowadays, they don't have that uh, that luxury to kind of do yeah. what they want because they have to run back, they have to it's track cool. back, they have to mark mm. someone, get into the, uh, their starting position again. And Neil Warner just gave, gave him that free role and it was great to see him really do that in the Premier League and it was mm. fantastic to see him play. Yeah, a culture for sure, a culture, but it's more. I think street football is different in different kind of parts of the world, and where Adult Arab grew up was different from a culture. And for me, I think you can just see like what it was like to grow up in Nigeria compared to was it uh, Tarap's Moroccan, but he grew up in France, isn't it? I think yeah. he, he grew up in France, so so um, yeah, you can just see the differences, and it's just about preference. Like, I think he was incredible. But I don't know, Okocha had that rawness, like anything goes, like imagination of, of tricks, like very obvious feints, but you still can't stop it. You know, it's, mm. it's, it reminds me of one of my uncles. So maybe it's just because I can relate to it. Mm. Imagine like, just re- re- imagine one of my uncles playing football with his big belly, but just being really good. That's what Okocha feels like. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's 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 I've never heard JJ Koch being described as like one of my uncles with a big belly. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's see how we get in terms of viewership from that. Yeah. Um, so that's the culture to wrap. We've got Alan Smith. Ah, I don't know. I, I might go for another another blonde guy, you know, Sean. And the you one can't. I'm thinking of, again, I hope it's not like an African versus blonde thing on, on our screen. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm going for, um, it's not a racial thing, I swear. Um, but no, I think I'm going to go for Morton Gap Pedersen. He's someone that mm. I quite I quite enjoyed to watch. And there was another blonde player that I will say, even if he doesn't make the team, I'll say him later on. But Morton Gaps Pedder was some was someone who was very enjoyable to watch. He had a wand of a left foot. He was someone that a lot of the big teams were kind of courting in a way, but they never really got that deal over the line. 
scoring a really good free kick. Sorry, Sean, against Arsenal. Yeah. In, in that, <laughs> guys, in love that, it. No, in that 7 1 defeat, so they did lose 7 1, uh, Blackburn, but he did score a really good uh, free kick in there. He loved the goal against Manchester United and he loved the goal against Tottenham as well. But it was someone that would always uh, like to turn up on, on the left wing. He was kind of one of the first left wingers I saw from like a lower half uh, Premier League side, being like an introverted winger. So going on to the right hand side, sometimes playing as a second striker as well. So uh, I think it was Sam Allardyce at the time. Um, Steve Keane, again, was the manager around that time as well for Blackburn. Uh, there's probably one or two I've forgotten at the same time. But they gave him a lot of creativity and a lot of freedom because they knew he was that kind of player. And him coming alongside the likes of Junior Hoyler, Roque Santa Cruz, who I'll mention later on, because I thought he was a fantastic player at the time as well. Uh, but Morton Gaps Pedersen, I've, I've put him on my list as well. And I think he's still one of those really nice, uh, aesthetically pleasing type of players to watch as well. I think left foot players generally are, but Morton yeah. Gaps yeah. Pedersen definitely yeah. I think he's still playing as well. And I remember like United were always linked with Pedersen, like mm. because like we needed a long term replacement for gigs. And I remember seeing his name always like linked with us. But yeah. yeah, as you said, it never happened in the end. But I think he should have gone on to another level after Blackburn. But I can't remember where he went after. Maybe he went back to Norway or something. But yeah, he was he was a great player in the Premier League. Yeah, so I mean, if anyone's listening and they have Morton Gamps Pedersen's info and you can get him on the podcast, please do, because I'd love to have a conversation about how long he practices corners and his set pieces, because just fascinating to me as well. And at the time as well, you didn't really see many Norwegian players coming through um, in that era of the Premier League as well. I know Solskjaer had recently mm-hmm. retired. You'd have like uh, Breda Hangland from Fulham mm-hmm. coming in and Gamps Pedersen, but you didn't really see much of that. And now... You've got um, one of the biggest players in world football, a Nor- Norwegian footballer, then Erlen Brandt Haaland as well. So, mm. Sean, are you happy with that pick for Morten Gaps yeah, Pedersen? No, I'm, I'm excited. I love a left footer as well. So, I'm, 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 hope- I'm hoping your next Smith. pick is I'm hoping your next pick is an Oblong guy because then it's just going to look so bad for us as well. Do you know, what? I've got two. One, I've got two, but we'll get to it. I've got two as well. Um, back to you, Anthony. Let's hear your thoughts on your third pick for your team. Can I go for Nani, or is that too mainstream? Is Nani all right? Go for Nani. Yeah, Definitely. basically that 07 08 season when we bought Nanny, Anderson, Tevez, and I was just gassed. Hargreaves as well. That was such a good summer for us. And when I saw like Nanny, like he was billed as the next Ronaldo, and like the flair what he brought onto the pitch, a bit like Okocha, like he would show his personality, maybe in a different way. Like he was always billed as the next Ronaldo, but he managed to come to Old Trafford, even though maybe it was only for a few seasons when we really saw his best. But he had that flair where he could go either way. He could score like chip goals, goals from long range. I think it's those players where they just show imagination on the pitch and you never know what they're going to do next. Mm. I think it must be hard playing with them, but also playing against them, it must be like near enough impossible because he could go either way, right foot, left foot, or he could score from long range or do whatever he wanted on the football pitch. So I think those players, they're kind of coming out of the game because it's so tactical now and they're being like, told like what to do at all times whereas like players like Nanny they just do what they wanted on the football pitch and you've got to let those players like do what they want because their flair can win you the game at any time yeah I remember I remember another goal again it's against Arsenal so I am apologizing again Sean you did it on purpose I'm not I'm not doing it on purpose he scored one amazing goal it may have been an Almunia own goal but do you remember how you just how Anthony just mentioned about creativity and flair and literally when you mentioned those words it triggered it in my mind you remember that goal that game when Man United played Arsenal and Nani was on the wing against Clichy, he went on the outside. He then did a little uh, chop and then he like tried to dink, dink it over Almunia. Yeah. 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 If, if we've seen that in that day and age, that's being lauded as, oh, one of the greatest things you'll ever see in modern football. But because it was against when flair plays were more hyped up than they are now, that was something special. But it's just one mm-hmm. of those things that a lot of people didn't get to appreciate at the time because it was always Ronaldo's left. Let's see what Nani can do to hit the numbers yeah. and the heights that Ronaldo did as well. And that mm. was very unfair. I think it was one of those things where, because he was Portuguese, it worked against him in that way, um, mm. unfortunately. I was going to say that's the one thing I have against Nani is that I thought, <clears throat> not his fault, but I feel like his game, if Nani came to the Premier League by himself with no Ronaldo, I think he'd have been bigger than what he would be like and what he has become. Mm. I think a lot of people don't know about him because a lot of a lot of things I've always heard about Nani is that he tries to be Ronaldo. And I don't think he tries to be Ronaldo, I just think it's his game is very similar to Ronaldo's. And a yeah. lot of people just have always assumed, oh, he's just trying to be Ronaldo. Every single thing, he just wants to be Ben. Like, I remember there was the goal where Ronaldo chipped over and it was going in and then Nani went and tapped it in. <laughs> was and, was always, and he was offside. And everybody was oh, like, that's Nani, Portugal, he, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So, Spain. 
and oh. everybody's always said, "Oh, Nani, Nani's this thing about this thing about Ronaldo is always kind of been a blanket over his career that he never got to be as big as he possibly could have been in terms of like being a flair player and all those things because he was always just compared to Ronaldo in every capacity." Mm. Did you see that in the media as well, um, Anthony, as well, when you saw that with the Nani and, and Ronaldo comparisons? Did you see that from, like, within the circles and stuff like that when people were writing about Nani? Well, I was, I was at college at the time, but, um, yeah, I think it was clear to see. I think Nani's also seen it. Like, I listened to, like, the United podcast with Nani on, and he said like, he was always compared to Ronaldo when he wanted to yeah. be his own man, but because they were both Portuguese, they both came from sport in Lisbon, there was always that comparison. But I think he's shown, like, after going leaving United, he's shown wherever he's been that he's always performed. Um, and, like, Fergie used to rely on him in some games. And even, like, taking the penalty in the Champions League final, like, it showed his mentality that he was a good player. But it's a shame that he didn't hit those levels. But I still have him in my team because of his flair yeah. and his, his character. That's a good choice because I think, although he is fairly mainstream, people do sleep on him. Like mm. so, streets will never forget. I think that's a, an appropriate place to put Nani in. So yeah. And one last thing I want to add there because you mentioned something about being two footed. I'm going to change the subject, but we're going back to this straight away. Is mm. do you know the best two footed player I've ever seen is Usman Dembele at Barcelona. I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> he's doing really, he's doing really he well at the moment. Oh really my! Really I've never. Well. Yeah, he's he's crazy good. I never obviously because the has gone over now, and that's why now I watch Barcelona a bit more to see how he's doing. <laughs> and watching Dembele, I don't even know why people booed him. I don't, I don't get mm. it. He's phenomenal. But anyway, He's on a free there. transfer as well this summer, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He is. Uh, three months ago, everyone was shaking their head at Dembele. Now, three months later, everyone's trying to get his signature. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Xavi phenomenal. said that, yeah. though. Xavi predicted that, to be fair. Yeah, Xavi's done wonders with him. And fair play to Xavi and to Usman Dembele as well. And fair play to Sean yeah. for shouting him out because he deserves a bit no. of credit as well. It's okay. He takes corners of any foot he wants, which is ridiculous. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. Um, I, and I, when I say that, I don't even mean like it's a joke. He genuinely does. Like, you see him go to his left foot and then like, actually, you know, right foot is better. And he'll just switch. <laughs> he does that with penalties as well. He did that at Rennes, which is crazy as well. Incredible. So yeah. we've got Tarat, we've got Akotcha, and now we've got Nani. So, Sean, we need someone someone to really boost up our team now as well, with Alan Smith and Morton Gamps pedersen We need, <laughs> um, we need like a firecracker or someone. I can't even lie to you. I'm the wrong person to boost the team because, you know, <laughs> it's going to be the most random players. But with this one, I'm actually going to go for somebody that I think was strong. Mm. Centre-backs used to struggle with him. And we're talking about Yakubu. Ooh. Yeah, like that. Yakubu Yak. Ooh. The big the yak. yak and he will score. Yeah. Him and Alan Smith up front, problems. Because Alan Smith will kick you in your chest and Yakubu will just move to you. <laughs> on, our social, on our social media, you and I are going to get laughed at so much for having Alan Smith and Yakubu <laughs> up front. Ridiculous. I get what I get your point of view. Believe me, I get it. But I know for a fact, like people will be like, why didn't you pick this person and that person? I had a couple of strikers in mind as well, which is great. And we've got six aside, so we've got three more to go for. But for me, I always remember you, Kubu, rightly or wrongly, for that miss in the 2010 World Cup. And you're just seeing him stare down the, the, the face of the camera as well. Yeah. That was quite sad. And it was one of those games in South Africa, like I'd finish school and I'd be get home for like the second half of the game. So it was like one of the mm. first things I saw on TV as well. I forgot who it was against. Uh, but you're just kind of there like, oh man, you see him doing it for Everton, for Portsmouth especially, when, yeah. he, when he comes to the team as well. Um, it's just one of those things that I wish a lot of people kind of well I could have seen how good Yakubu actually was as a striker how yeah, was he, he for is. how was he for Nigeria um, besides that obviously Tim did, did he do okay yeah, uh, yeah no, I mean generally um, he was respected like we, we've produced quite a few decent strikers um, like Agalu, probably the most recent in terms of um, of that generation um, Oshiman and yeah we've had like a long line or then Wingy um, and yeah, Yakubu was definitely one of them. Um, I'm not sure like his goal record, but yeah, he's definitely respected. So it is a as as you say, it's a bit unfortunate that people remember remember that miss, like kind of forgetting the consistency he'd had in the Premier League, like ten plus goals for over five seasons. It's not it's not easy to do, especially as a, a foreign import. So um, yeah, he's Another respected team as well. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, Everton, you know, he 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 held his way up, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Brilliant, deserves the credit. I'll back Yakubu in this team, Sean. We're, we're getting somewhere with Yakubu in this yeah. team. Don't worry, my son's a goalkeeper. <laughs> I'm, I've, I've got two blonde players. Again, not, not a racial thing. And I've got someone <laughs> special I want, I want to mention as well. So I think Sean will be surprised by one of these mentions. But 
Um, who are we next? Who are we at uh, next? Is it Zim's turn next? Yeah, it's my turn. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, it was so interesting you mentioned it, Alan Smith, because so it made me think of someone. I'm not going to choose him, it's just an honorable mention. But, um, and speaking of Norwegian players, as you did before, John Arnarisa, um, yeah, apart from him being like a Liverpool player as well, the shot on him, like, yeah, his shot broke Alan Smith's leg. How's yeah. the shot? breaking a person's leg not a tackle a shot the power was yeah. enhanced like it's ridiculous um so like i think the streets will never forget his his shot power alan smith certainly won't forget his, his shot power to be fair um but who i'm actually gonna go for is uh a very agile nippy fulham player who i used to I do, do you know it is i had a fixation on certain players from 2002 World Cup because of where it was hosted mm. and because of the culture that I was into very strongly at that time. And um, I think Inamoto, I think uh, mm. he, he get he gets slept on a lot. I think there haven't been many Japanese players uh, in the mm. Prem. Um, but I think, yeah, he definitely like paved the way in a sense. I think at the moment, like, I can't put that. I think they've only had like a centre-back um, other than that. So Kugawa, Minamino. Yeah, you know. yeah, Minamino yeah. too. Um, but I'm sure like if you ask those players who they would like look to uh, back in the day, like Inamoto would be one of the first players like mm. in on their list, as well as like Nakamura, Celtic. But um yeah, for me, Inamoto did stand out. So yeah, that's that's my choice. Anthony, do you remember anything about um was it you see Inamoto, his first name? Uh was that his first name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, he, he's someone that I thought literally walked. So all of these other uh, uh, players, not just from Japan, but from the Far East could actually run in the Premier League and in, and in European football after that World Cup in 2002. So do you have yeah. any kind of thoughts on uh, Yusin Emoto, Anthony? Uh, was he at Fulham as well for a bit? Was it? Yeah, he was at Fulham, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah I kind of remember him at Fulham. I can't... Did he play that much at Arsenal? I feel like he no. didn't really play. No, he didn't, did he? I do remember we bought him, him at Fulham. He was big, yeah. Yeah. But it's always good when players from different cultures come into the Premier League because, as you said, it does open doors um, for for their countrymen, basically. But, yeah, I've got no plans with that. I, I like Inamoto. So we've got a good little midfield of Inamoto, Okocha, Nani on the wing. Yeah, agile. Shaping up. Like, you know what I mean? Got, got the balance. <laughs> I don't know about you lot. Well, you've got the balance for now. Yeah. Guess, See, guess, who's, guess, guess who's adding balance to us now? Guess who's adding balance? It's my Go turn. On. My sense, I'm sorry, Sean wanted to say something before. I, I was I gonna say, let Nanny try to do a step over with Yakubu and Alan Smith around. <laughs> <laughs> Yakubu, Alan Smith, and my next one may get a few eyebrows risen when people are listening to this, but I'm going for Abu Diaby. I think Abu yeah. Diaby was Ola, one, of the, one of the most slept Ola. on midfielders, Ola. Ola. one Ola. of the most slept on midfielders in Premier League, I agree. Uh, in the modern Premier League, because he it's was injured all the time, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I think Marcus said as well. My, my cousin who supports Arsenal, he we used to play football manager every weekend at his house, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, he used to like bang on about the RV. And I used to think he was taking a mick. I thought because I thought he was just being biased. He supported Arsenal. I thought he yeah. was mocking it. But then he said, "No, I watched videos because I didn't actually watch him play. I just heard he was always injured, and he seemed mm-hmm. like just a generic generic player mm-hmm. in midfield." His compilation is ridiculous. So actually watching him live properly would have been a joy. I didn't really watch him much, but looking back and how he bossed the midfield, just skipping past plays, flary as well. People sleep mm. on that for someone so like lanky and gangly. Great composure, great touch. Like, yeah, proper baller, proper baller. Uh, that, that was the time that I missed Arsenal because I'd had enough. I stopped watching <laughs> Arsenal for like two, three years because every time he was injured, Arsenal won't win in the league anymore. It was just too much. I mean, did they win the league with with Abu Diaby? Sorry, I called him Musa nope. Diaby. That's a nope. uh, fine Leverkusen winger. But Abu Diaby in midfield. But for me personally, um, Zim, we've talked about this previously as well. I think it was one, one of our watch-alongs when we, unfortunately, we don't really see a lot of black players being praised for their technical ability. But Musa, mm. Abu Diaby, not Musa <laughs> Diaby. Musa yeah. Diaby is that amazing winger at uh, Bayern Leverkusen. Abu Diaby was the former Arsenal and Auxerre midfielder who had very good technical ability he can hold the play properly he's a very shrewd purchase from Arsene Wenger and if he had a really good um fitness level and he wasn't injured all the time him and Thomas Riziki 
would have been really, really good in that And Santi. Santi was okay. Uh, no, huh? Santi, Santi was a he couple was of very both I meant in terms of injuries. Like, oh, I okay. He was out. Diaby was always out. Santi Cazorla played a lot more, I think, with, under the... Oh, league. I thought you meant that midfield would have been all right with those three. Nah, Santi Cazorla's an FA Cup winner. He could have won the league with you as well, which would have been crazy. But, no, nah, I was a big fan of uh, Abu Diaby. Unfortunately, he was one of those players that ended up uh, leaving. I think he went to Marseille afterwards as well. Um, but, Sean, this is kind of where I'm going to bring you in as well, because I just wanted to ask hmm. you, do you have any kind of big memories of Diaby, how he kind of played in big games? If you had any, like, memorable moments as an Arsenal fan, I just wanted to no. know a bit more from yourself as well. Like Can I said, play? that was... That was, you know, how you guys are in your slump now, and mm. how you're feeling. When I got to this point, I stopped watching football because it was, <laughs> it was horrid. Like i will never forget it because every single season it was like we were just there. It was like we were just there, mm. but it was always, oh, we're paying off the stadium, we're doing this, and this is when Chelsea came to prominence. Mm. And so that was when I was just like, no, I can't watch Chelsea even in the league. I can't watch Chelsea doing this. So I just stopped watching football. So I missed Abu Dhabi, and the glimpses that I got to see of him, he was brilliant. But he literally come one, two, three games, picking up form, injury, gone for six months, come back, do the same thing, gone for another seven months, and it was just, it was just annoying. You never, you never got to see him have a consistent run because then also Fabregas kind of had the same issues, Santi had the same issues, Rosicky had the same issues, Podolski had the same issues. Did Halab as well? Did Halab have had injuries? Same, yeah. <laughs> we had so many players that were just consistently injured, and for some reason Arsenal couldn't get anybody to function fully. And it was just like, we, that's one of the things that stopped us from going far during that time. Um, that was like off, after we'd gone invincible, after the only area of the Arsenal just, just done a rebuild and we thought, yeah, this team is good enough. But they just, they were, they were just not there. Yeah, it, it wasn't great. It wasn't great because, again, like even people like Fabregas had played one game. He came on as a sub against Aston Villa, scored two goals yeah. and got subbed off in the same half because you were literally that short on injuries. And yeah. uh, obviously, we've talked about the Eduardo injury, Van Persie having loads yep. of injuries as well at Arsenal. Yep. So it was never a great time uh, at no. the time uh, under Arsenal Wenger at the Emirates for Arsenal as well. But, Anthony, I just want yeah. to know um, your thoughts on Abu Dhabi. And, like, does it kind of get annoying when you see loads of players getting injured as a reporter or as a journalist or even as an editor? Because I think he spent a total of 222 weeks mm, out, wow. of, out of the game, out of his career, being injured. Wow. And he had 42 different injuries as well. So does that kind of... Um, like correlate or translate to like um the the journalists um, reading about that as well. Is that oh no? I think, happy, but... Yeah, I think journalists just feel sorry for them because obviously they're there to play football and like for them to be in the treatment room must be horrible. It's like a journalist mm. not being allowed to go and report on their local club. Like so it's yeah, it's more sympathy than anything because they're not able to do their craft, which is just horrible. So yeah, you do feel sorry for them. Um, sometimes the players, they'll speak to the media about their injury agony and stuff. So it can be a good story for the media. But obviously, you just want everyone fit and healthy and be able to show their best form on the pitch rather than off it. Yeah. No, I can understand that completely as well. And it's just one of those things that it's just human nature. I just kind of feel sorry for someone who's always injured as well. But yeah, um, we did tell you guys we're adding some steel into our, mid into our team and having a bit more balance as well. So Abu Dhabi is making our team. And I think I'm going to give him the captaincy as well. What do you think, Sean? I agree with that. Deserve yeah, definitely. It. definitely. Right, who's got who's got the next pick for um, Anthony and Zim? I think it's Anthony, isn't it? So Zim, do you want to go first? You, uh, can, yeah, you can name your last two, by the way. So you can just name two. Okay. Yeah. So you can... Is it two each or just one each? One each to make up your oh, one side. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zim, you go and then I'll go. Okay, cool. Um, mine is uh, Tottenham great. <laughs> uh, if you could say that. Have they uh, had any greats? Honestly, <laughs> in my opinion, in my opinion, I think he's a very stepped-on midfielder. Um, he, he could trip, he, I, I want you to guess who, I, who, who it Huddleston. is. No, 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 no. Dribbling, no, dribbling past anyone, like, press-resistant. Timu Tanyo. Nah, mate. <laughs> nah, it's Dembele. Composed. Uh. The most composed, like, in that position. Like, his dribbling skill and ability. You're used to seeing that, like, as one of the wingers or like one of the front three did that in midfield with ease with ease like, I never mm. really see saw him got like getting pinched off the ball um very comfortable very composed and yeah Dembele obviously as a midfielder give give our team a bit more structure because we've got a lot of flair he has flair but you know he, he starts it off from the back so 
yeah, I think that would be a good addition. To I like that. I like you know that. what? You know what? I'm stumped at that. I'm stumped that I didn't think yeah. of him earlier because he was incredible. I would never let you put him on our team. I, I would put him on the team. I couldn't care less, Sean. I really couldn't. I'd have put him in that team as well. He'd have been fantastic. But Anthony, I just want to know: was there any was there any truth to that link with uh, Musa Dembele from Fulham to Manchester United before he went to Tottenham? Do you reckon there was any truth in that? Because he would have been quite a yeah. quite a problem solver for a lot of our midfield problems that we had at the time. Yeah, I think that was a bit before my time in journalism. But because of how strong the reports are, I'm sure there was some truth into it. And yeah, as you said, he's a fantastic player. And like whenever you read. Tottenham players, who they say was the best player they played with, they all say Dembele. So and Pochettino that, said it as well. One of yeah, so whenever they say that, you know he was, like, they could have named mm. anyone, but, like, Harry Kane, or they always say Dembele, so that shows that he was such a top-class talent in midfield for them. Yeah, I had the luxury of seeing uh, Dembele play, I think, twice when Man United played Tottenham, and in one of the games we beat them, no, in two of the games we beat them 1-0, but it's because Dembele was literally running the show against our midfielder, like Michael Carrick, Paul Pogba, under Herrera, Mm. Um, sometimes I think the second time he played against us in a home game, we've had a five-three-two formation as well because of how Dembele gets in and out of these pockets of spaces, how he can take on a player just by a feint or a shoulder drop and just mm. by flicking his, his left foot around and wonder the left foot as well. Amazing passer, amazing weight of passer as well. Um, so Sean, I was gonna I was, if I could remember Musa Dembele, I would have put him in my team, but Zim, I think you just cracked it there. Yeah, Great man. Shot. So enjoyable to watch. That's the thing. He passed the eye test and, yeah, like his ball retention, top notch. Um, you know, I was really envious of that Tottenham midfield. Like, they had Modric. They had, like, they had a lot of ballers. And you're just like, these are players that you'd associate with Man United of, mm. of yesteryear. Mm. Um, but, yeah, Dembele, before he went to Tottenham at Fulham, I just, I saw a lot of potential. But sometimes it doesn't translate to when you go to a bigger team. But clearly, it did with Dembele, and I think um, Tot- Tottenham's recruitment was excellent at that point because Modric going on to Real Madrid and doing what what he did. Like I think it's just test- testament to the fact that, yeah, Dembele playing alongside, you know, was of of levels. Like I can see him being in Real Madrid and being of a of a good enough sta- standard, good enough caliber, which yeah. is testament. So yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing that annoyed me the most, I think he left in that January. Did he Did he leave in that January after they had the Champions League final as well? It's one of those things. Uh, yeah, it might yeah. have been. So it's one of those things where we went to China. I'm just that one more European club. Yeah. Seeing him in the Champions League would have been really good. Kind of like with uh, Vertonghen at Benfica. It would have been really good to see him in a, another European league consistently mm. at, at top mm. level as well. That was something that really annoyed me about them. But fantastic player. Again, like Zim said, just passed the eye test repeatedly, which is great. Um. Anthony, you got the joy of finishing off your team for your yeah. um, six side of streets. We'll never forget. Who are you going to go for? So I'm going to add some more flair into our, our team, and I want some South London influence. Like I'm you from need South it. London. Like you yeah. need more flair. So in your team. I'm going to add Crystal Palace, former Crystal Palace winger Yannick Balassi to our team. Ooh. More flair, yeah. more character, more personality to put onto the pitch. I remember that Chris Stambul game because I was there covering it for the media and that thrill when he just roasted Glenn Johnson. And some of the skills he used to pull out, I remember watching the match of the day, they always said like he never knew what he was going to do next and that his teammates must find it awkward to play with. But I know for a fact that his teammates love playing for him with him. And if he didn't get that injury for Everton, I remember when he done it against United, actually, which basically crocked his career in the Premier League. But... Mm. I just think he had so many different levels to go up and above, but for some reason, obviously, that injury put his career in the mud a bit, but now he's playing in Turkey, but I just love what he's done because he got bums off seats, and that's what you want. When you pay to watch a football yeah. match, you want people to excite you, and the way he's done with his natural ability and his skill, I think, was second to none, basically, in the Premier League at that time. I think we're done out here, Sean. I think, we're do- I think we can't pick two people that can overcome the flair that they have in this team and if they were to be in a six aside cage with us unless we pick two really good players I think we're done before we even get started so. <laughs> Sean uh, I'm, gonna let, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you start because I've got all of like I said I've got all these blonde players in my mind I'll be okay, <laughs> I'll be okay. you know what yeah I was actually gonna go for a goalkeeper but I don't think I can go for the goalkeeper we can't put a goalkeeper no. we can't put a goalkeeper <laughs> I was thinking of Alex or Gail Clichy, but I'm like, these lot will just nah. get turned inside of out. This is not um, one. Somebody that had flair. Oh. Uh, 
Dimitri Payet, he comes to mind. Nah. Michu comes to mind. He's a proper streets will never get type player. Um, Ida Johnson, he's a very intelligent player. I thought he was a great player to, to play. Uh, there's one guy that Andre Arsenal. No, he used to play for P- for PSG. He used to play for PSG and they used to hate him. And I, I think League he guy. was I think he did come to the Premier League, but I don't remember when he'd come to the Premier League. Ben Arthur. Uh, Ben Arthur. Oh, Ben Arthur. Ooh, mm. Atem. Ben Arthur. Atem. Baller. Baller. Big yeah. baller. We got, we got some... We got some... Bandizi and Suburb. Uh, the, the, Paris Arthur, Suburbs, yeah. they've got a real fertile, like, um, like gr- ground, you know, in terms of breeding, like, talent. It's crazy. It's crazy. That's the same South with South London, London, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's true. Recently, yeah. though, recently. I was mm. Go on, go on, Sean. Yeah, Talk to us about yeah, no. Ben Arthur. Ben Arthur, I would definitely put him in the team because he was something else. Because at that, that time when he was in Newcastle, mm. ridiculous. I've never seen a player carry a team, a player, player carry a team with that stature. And he did it. He used to have them on his back. He was, I remember he just used to cause me problems, cause me stress. Why? Yeah. Was he part of that 4 4 team as well? That I think so. Yeah. With Czech, he also so. scoring that winner. Yeah, yeah. I think, yes, yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Rest in peace. Chet Chet was Chet. another, yeah, that was another baller as well. But yeah, no, he was, he just used to, he was, Back then, he kind of used to do what um, I say Maxman does now. Mm. Say so Maxman's mm. another baller as well. Like it's literally before, he, yeah, he was, and everybody to this day still him as Ben Arthur. Like ballers that I've watched him play will literally say, yeah, Ben Arthur was something that was, and he should have gone to a better team. He should have gone to the Arsenal's and Man United's, the Chelsea mm. of that time. Um, but I think PSG ruined his career. I think for me. He's at he's at Lille at the moment as well, the champions of yeah. France at the moment. So it's just it's one um, of those things that like Adel Tarat, you see him in one of these teams thinking, Oh, he's actually doing okay for himself, but it's a squad player and there's not one of the main men there as well, which is a yeah. something to be that, fair, when when we had Emery at Arsenal, he we played against Lille and mm. he was on, on the team, on their team. And even still today, he's I will never forget that game because obviously he has a little bit of a, of a war with Emery yeah. and he took the mick out of the Arsenal players. <laughs> And you mm. could tell he wanted he wanted to cause damage that game. He wanted violence. Ben he wanted, wanted violence. violence. No, that's, that's that's crazy. I've got I've got one. I've got a couple to kind of add to the list, like I mentioned. But who have you got? We've got Morton Gantz Pedersen, got Alan Smith, got Hatem Ben Arfa, and Yakubu. then Yakubu. So we've got four. And then who's our fifth one that I mentioned before? Um, Diaby. Diaby. Who's the Diaby? Uh, so yeah. We got we, we don't need a defender because they haven't got no. any defenders, so we need to go all out. All out attack. I think I think I'm gonna stick for I'm gonna I, I'm gonna try to add some player to this because I was thinking of Denver Bar. I thought Denver Bar was a great player to yeah. to watch at Chelsea and at Newcastle and not really at West Ham to be fair, but Newcastle especially where he came into the Premier League. I always appreciate that when a player comes from like a team like Hoffenheim or from Hamburg or Auxerre, they come into the Premier League and they actually hit the ground running. So it's, it's always fascinating to see that, and I do appreciate that. Um, one player that I, I did like, like I mentioned, Lauren Robert, uh, again, Newcastle players, they're always coming into my mind. It was good to see them as well. Amir Zaki from Wigan, he deserves an honourable mention for that first season he came into the Premier League. It was great to see him play. Um, but I think I think the player that I'm going to go for, it's not Rory Delap. It's definitely not Rory Delap because you don't need long throw-ins on a six-side <laughs> pitch as well. Uh, Shout out Rory Delap. Nah, I'm, I'm stuck. Who are we going to go for, Sean? I'm going to give you two options. I'm gonna go for Ida Good Johnson as one. Or Sid knows I love him. Ida Good Johnson was a was a sick player as well. Or we're gonna go for <laughs> Dimitri Payet to bring up our flair. Do you know what? I'm it's linking to, I'm I'm linking towards Payet, but Johnson was just something even when you saw him at Stoke, he was a fun yeah. player to watch. He was a very intelligent player. And Mourinho appreciated him as well. Uh Tony he was him as well. Such a tapid merchant as well. He was that guy that would get you goals. Exactly. And he went to Barcelona in their prime years as well, playing with Henri, yeah. Ronaldinho, Messi, won the Champions yeah. League with them. Incredible player. But... Put it down for the Icelandic community. Yeah. Definitely. No, for me, that... Zim knows how much I love Good Johnson. I'm, I'm going for Good Johnson. But I'm thinking of Payet. You know Do you what... know the thing about Payet, yeah? Because come to the 6 or 5 game, imagine half time and he wants to leave. I can't be having that. <laughs> 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 can't be having that. Oh, my days. But I'm just thinking of the matchup. Balassi. Tarat, a cotcher. Oh, you lot are getting roasted. Yeah, oh, we've already won. You if, lot are getting destroyed. If, if we bring Paya, in, if we bring Paya into this, it's not that bad. If you know what I mean. 
you lot are going to look at our team and just say, nope, it's over. It's okay. <laughs> it's GG. You not at all. Back into the not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm oh, telling man. you now, bro. Tell Nanny to do a step over. I, 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 I dare you get Nanny to do we'll, a step we'll, over. We'll bring Jamie Carrigan. He can break his leg again and be like, no, nah, it wasn't my fault. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, do you know what? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Payet. Let's go. As long Payet. as he's not leaving, that's in his contract. He's not leaving. He can't leave. <laughs> he can't leave. He, he, he can do as many game. skills as he wants. He can take that's a free kick if he wants. Indirect free kick. Honestly, <laughs> half time. Guy wants to go. No, I can't be having that. So just to start from the back, we've got Pedersen, Diaby. We've got Yakubu, Payet, um, Alan Smith, Alan Smith, and Ben Arthur. And Ben Arthur. So Alan Smith is breaking legs. Ben Arthur, Payet. That's for the flair as well. It's great, but I think I think if we put this as a poll, I think Zim and Anthony may have won this because they got even even like Dembele just took took me by surprise. Like, how the hell did I forget him? That's uh, a Zim, great yeah. shout. It was a great that shout. Was a great shout. Zim, do you want to read out your team for us just so we can get that confirmed? Yeah, so yeah, got uh Dem- Dembele, got Inamoto, uh got Adel Tarap, and then on Anthony's end, got Akocha. Um, who else you got? We got Balassi. And who's the other one? Nani. Oh yeah, Nani. Yeah. Nani. Yeah. How can I forget? <laughs> oh man, no, we're, 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 we've got rinsed before we walked on the pitch. But Honorable that's, mention that's... as well to um Lu- Lua Lua. Um, I, Lua, I, Lua, Lua. I was Lua. the big biggest fan because I feel like he had no end product. But in mm. terms of just pure flair, mm. <laughs> creativity, we can use with the spirit of his flair in our team on top of the flair we've already got. So you guys will just be bamboozled. And um, man, yeah. he can yeah. be player manager. Player manager. <laughs> we'll have we'll have like two guy as our player manager as well. Ah, uh, I remember and two guy. guy those yeah, banging the... shots. Two guys. Guy so something... mm. Oh man, it's always it seems like Blackburn and Middlesbrough and yeah, some of that have these streets. Uh. Forget it's it's great, and I think again we'll have like a part two of this coming in the future because there's so many players that we didn't give their flowers to, and there's yeah. so many players just outside the Premier that we can. We can do as well. So, um, just behalf on, on myself, thank you everyone for participating. It's great fun, but realistically, Sean, I think we're done. I think, I think, I'm no, hoping think so. it's more, it's more hope than expectation. I think, but last the way Anthony just rolled out off the tongue, but last Okocha and Nanny as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shut shut yourself in your foot with, with Alan Smith to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> and you're, and you're well. <laughs> no, Alan Smith is something else. He's smoky. You guys are not ready for Alan Smith. Alan Smith. You guys don't remember. This is the thing. The streets have forgotten. The streets have actually forgotten. You went back to midfield when you went to United, bro. You went from bro, a striker. He's a, he's to a midfield midfielder. striker. <laughs> he's a midfield. He was, was the original number 10. The original number 10. Uh, <laughs> midfield striker. Crazy. No. Absolutely crazy. But no, my, my jaws are hurting from laughing and smiling as much as Chris is incredible. <laughs> Thank you